to lead this delegation here. Before I go on to make my statement, allow me to recognize my own female boss, my wife, Filomena. <laughs> At the January 2013 summit of the African Union, Mr. President, you will remember that Mrs. Zuma, in closing her first address to you, the African Heads of States Assembly of African Heads of States, ended her statement by saying, and I quote, we African women account for over 50% of the population and we give birth to the other 50%, unquote. <laughs> Africa indeed is making a march, it's looking at gender issues, but particularly, as I have heard from the experts in, in my own delegation, uh, Sierra Leone in particular has made a lot of strides, but yes indeed, there's a long way to go. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of those who have come in the mission. We introduced a few and with your permission, Mr. President, I'll ask my colleagues, all of those who came with us, to stand wherever you happen to be in the room. It, it's a big group. So, yes, please stand up. There are almost 20 of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please have a seat. Sometimes in Sierra Leone we take things for granted. We think things just happen. Sometimes we don't want to make the sacrifice of progress. Mm -hmm. Things don't just happen. Mm -hmm. You plan, you work, you become dedicated, you pursue it. Yeah. So, for these individuals to be here, for their bosses to allow them to come, it took some work over a year. Mm -hmm. But it also took support. Mm -hmm. When I mentioned this to His Excellency the President in December and the First Lady, they said we are all ready to back you. Do it. But let me tell you why it's also significant. Because I know many people have said, what did you discuss with Mr. President and the First Lady in Addis Ababa with your pinkish tie? <laughs> well, we always discuss what we discuss, development. Why were you so comfortable and laughing? Because we have a common agenda to improve the lives of human beings. And to improve the lives of human beings. But more importantly, more importantly, as Mr. President will do with me anywhere, if I say to him or he says to me, can you do so and so, I say yes, he checks. So that day in Addis Ababa, he and Madame wanted to know, will your delegation arrive, will they arrive on time? Mr. President, we're here. <laughs> why is this significant for you and why is it significant for the UN? I serve as a chief executive in the United Nations together with Michel Sidibe on an exclusive group we call the Chief Executives Board chaired by the Secretary General. It is very easy when you're dealing with global issues at 40,000 feet, strategic issues, that you spend a lot of time on paradigms, on analysis and theory. They all know that for seven years that I have served there, when I get bored with theory and abstraction, I say, let me tell you about my village. Let me tell you about my country. If all of what we are saying it is true, let's test it. So yes, we are here because I said to my colleague leaders, Sierra Leone is a microcosm of Africa. A microcosm of Africa because why? We saw conflict for 11 years. We sued for peace. We've had peace over a decade. We've had two good elections. Everything seems to be working well, but the fundamentals are still there. We still have tough problems. Yet, it is not about problems. It is about opportunity and possibilities. We are in a position, indeed, to make poverty history. If we're discussing an agenda for 2015 at the UN, if we're discussing new sustainable development goals, if you really believe what you say, join me in Sierra Leone. So that's how it is. So I'm very grateful that Margaret Chan, head of WHO, sent two directors. These are highly paid individuals, but they wanted to come. I'm very grateful, Ellen Clarkson, Susan McDay, UNDP. She's the chair of another group we have called the UN Development Group. I'm very honored that Michel Sidibe, you don't realize the pain he took to be here, 17 hours. He was with all the health heads 
in Botswana. 17 hours just to be here, and of course he has to leave at 430 to catch a flight from the But I had heard of what Shelley Blaine was doing for women. And so yes, when we were sitting on the set of Rendezvous with Zaina Badawi, after we finished, I said, Mrs. Blair, can you do me a favor? She said, what? Join me in Freita. She said, well, I'll take you up on it. One year later, Mrs. Blair, thank you very much. <laughs> but it is a sacrifice, because she has to jump on the plane again today to go take care of a major case she's trying. So salon people, team not to for free, takes effort. These people came here for a good reason. So, Mr. President, my delegation will not preach to Sierra Leoneans. We're here to learn as well. But we do have solutions because all of them are involved in key areas women's health, women and energy, but also entrepreneurship and economic empowerment. You might ask, what is the son of a chief? What is his interest in gender issues? I said yesterday at lunch with the women leaders, what I do is what I believe. It's what I believe. That's what my father taught me. If you have a P degree of chieftaincy, true chieftaincy, from the mother side and the father side, they train you to do what you believe and need. That's why I am at the level I am at the United Nations. I lead, I follow, and I follow with passion. When my father passed away, I never did a tribute in the newspapers. In fact, I had not done an article in a newspaper for 15 years. When my aunt passed away, Mrs. Sira Yila used to be Mrs. Sira Fraser. I did the first public, first public article in newspapers. I called it my mother, my moral compass. I mourned for my aunt in the newspapers, not for me, Papa. Two years later, another aunt died, Mrs. Posse Injai. I wrote another article, Gender Empowerment. Both women had an impact on my life. I didn't talk about my father. I talked about the women in my life in both articles. I am here because I believe, I believe that gender empowerment is important. Mr. President told me in December, as we usually discuss, I said, what would be your primary Bush in your second term. You've achieved a lot already. But he has many ideas. You know he's a businessman and he's a visionary leader. He said, but there is one that is important, gender. And I asked him why. So Mr. President, because you said it is important, you're a man, I'm a man. I said, well, I back him. I bring people who know that issue to help you the women progress. I was, finally, I was in my village Christmas time. Many of you asked, what was he doing there? I go to my village. I live in Vienna. Vienna is ranked the best city to live in for four years in a row by the Marseille Tourism Agency. The best city to live in in the world. So I have everything. But my reality is not Austria or Vienna. My reality is Kitchen. My reality is ceremony. So what was I doing in Kitchen in December? Thanks to the backing of Mr. President, Olini Yero Binkoka, Mr. Kanoko, NPA sent some people to help us put up the poles to get the electricity gasifier working. Second, there was an American professor visiting, a professor specialist in gender affairs. She had spent a month in my village because the soil is a Peace Corps volunteer in my village. They have recorded the impact of the 400 solar lanterns we distributed in the village. The impact for the first time in my village in a decade. They had the best decade results because of extra two hours of time. They were in my village, finally. At 3.30 one afternoon in my village, I have shown the video in Washington two weeks ago about my reality. I was sitting in a place where I'm trying to put up a mud house. And the boat came back. Those of you who know my village, Mr. Minister of Agriculture and others, 
from kitchen, you know I'm on, on a village on the estuary of a river. I pray that climate change don't get worse, my village might disappear. I was sitting there at 3.30 in the afternoon. If you want, I give it to SLDS to play for you. A boat came by. A woman picked up firewood, put it on her head. And of course, I had my iPhone, I took it out. You might say, young Keller, you should have been helping her. Helping her. But I needed to record it. She was carrying firewood, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But what was different, and I had never seen it before, she was pregnant. She took the first load, came back for the second load. She had a two-year-old kid, and you'll hear me ask her, where's your husband? Of course, if I did in the work, I come back. You know, in the old night, I recall it. So for me, when you talk about energy, it is real. The latest statistics from WHO in December shows 3.5 million deaths a year from indoor air pollution because of the use of firewood biomass. It is worse than malaria. This is why Hillary Clinton backed us two years ago with the Global Cook Stove Initiative. Our women are dying. But let me tell you why the village thing bothered me. It was 3.30 in the afternoon. I am sure the woman went back to cook. I am sure if she's on Rocky, he didn't get for go back now where for go fetch water and she will cook and poison herself. But guess what? We met with the power and something else. Thank you very much.